This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. The third way, though, is rather different. The third way is to issue what we call convertible debt. Or convertibles. Now again, if you already don't want to use our vacation with me. But what convertible debt is, is beautiful. Now again, I'll write an example, but then I'll show you some numbers later. Now what this may be, um, maybe you issue... Ooh, 8% debentures repayable in five years time but what makes these different is whereas ordinary debentures in five years time you would repay them cash, you agree? Mm -hmm. If you don't nothing you'd have repaid a hundred, if it's a premium you might repay them more. But with convertibles, when it comes time for repayment, so in five years time, the investor has the choice, and I will write this obviously, but the investor is given the choice of taking cash or shares in the company. In five, uh, on repayment, investor has the choice of taking cash or a fixed number of shares in the company. Now here, although this is one of those things which might be immediately obvious for the words, or might not, I have to make 100% certain you're all clear, because this is the most important one. Could you turn, please, to page 71, page 71 of the notes? Well, it's a very easy and very quick little example, but you could certainly ask this. Uh, and so make sure you do understand. Uh, example one. Now, in fact, there are two bits, A and B. I'm only going to do A today. A company has issued 8% debentures 2010. You all know what that means. Uh, that means they'll pay 8% a year interest on nominal, and in 2010, they'll be repaid. Okay? However, on maturity, so what they mean is in 2010, repayment, they can be repaid at par, they'll be repaid 100, or converted to 20 ordinary shares in the company for every 100 nominal. Now, what's so important to actually write down if you need is, it, is the investor's choice. You knew when you bought the debentures that you'll get 8% of your interest, and in 2010, you'll be given the choice of taking cash or shares. Okay? The share price is currently 450. Well, fine. 
but it says, what will the adventurers choose to do on maturity if the share price of the company is A, $4 a share, B, $6. Well, the answer should be obvious. Remember, it's the investor's choice. In 2010, in 2010, they'll get a letter saying, it's time for repayment, what would you rather do? Well, in case one, the choice is you either take cash of 100 or you take shares. You were told you'd be entitled to 20 shares. Well, in case one, the shares are worth $4. It's your choice. Tell me, please, what will you do? Would you take shares or would you take cash? Uh, Captain, it's your choice, but I think you'd be a complete idiot if you didn't take cash. You'll take cash. <laughs> you can't have both. Uh, however, now come on, it's too obvious here. The important thing is, remember, you don't have to decide until 2010. You just sit and wait. And in 2010, in case two, all right, you've always got the choice of taking cash. On the other hand, it's a fixed number. You were told from the very beginning it'd be 20 shares. But in case two, the share price, the market value is $6. Which would you do, please, when you got the letter? Would you take shares or would you take cash? Shares, again, you'd be a complete idiot not to. The shares are worth 120. You'll take shares. It's wonderful. Uh, and appreciate, you don't have to keep the shares. It's your choice. If you take the shares, if you want to keep them, and then you'll get dividends and things. And if you don't want them, sell them on the stock exchange. You know, the $6 each, sell them and get 120. So no problem. You'd be an idiot not to take the shares. Clear? Everybody. Now, I've said twice, but I can't stress enough. I apologise for a third time. The investor's choice. It's not the company's. The company has to send them a letter saying it's time for repayment. Uh, it's not about just saying it's time for repayment. It'll say you've got the choice of cash or shares. And there'd be a little coupon to fill in. You take which you want. And clearly, maybe you decide to be an idiot and take the wrong one. If you want cash, they'll give you cash. If you want shares, they'll give you shares. What always amuses me is this. They always have this coupon and say, you know, take which you want. Uh, they say, for your information, the share price currently is... Six dollars or something. But they say, we are not allowed to advise you. See your financial advisor, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the second case, I keep saying, you'd be an idiot not to take shares, but they have to. And they can't advise you, and they have to give you the choice. Um, there we are. All right? Now, I say, those are very popular, and the reason they're popular is this. First of all, uh, why do investors like them? If you were an investor, why might you find it very attractive? I want to borrow money. But instead of just offering you uh, interest or stock, I offer you these convertibles. But, well, yeah, the point is, what's lovely, of course, is you can only win, you can't lose. You know, you're guaranteed to get back home with whatever happens. You can only do better, you can't do worse, unless the company collapses. And so that makes it, it really attractive. The trouble is, you know, buy shares in a company, you're hoping they'll go up, but you take the risk, you, you might go down, you know, you might lose money. Here, you get all the benefits. If the share price goes up, you win, but you don't lose if the share price goes down. See the point? It's beautiful. More importantly, why do companies like this show them? There are two reasons. Let me write down. What's the attraction for companies?
They're very common. Well, I'll tell you. The first attraction is the one I've been saying from the beginning. But I think you'd agree, if investors like these, they're likely to accept a bit lower interest. You know, if they want 8% interest normally, they might say, ah, because these might give me all these benefits, I'll accept only 7% interest. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, that's good for the company. And so, it's likely to be a way of paying less interest. I said at the beginning, they'll take less interest if you give them another benefit, you know? Well, that's obviously good for the company. However, uh, there's one, another advantage which is even more important. Can anybody tell me what's the other huge attraction to the company of issuing convertibles? Well, as I will tell you, ordinary debt. One problem which we've not discussed at all. There's nothing to discuss. Is it okay you borrow money, but then in five years' time or something, you've got to repay it? Where's the money going to come from? The company's got to make sure, surely, that all the ventures, if the company knows they're going to have to repay a million in five years' time, the company's either got to make sure they've been saving cash to be able to afford the repayment, or They've got to be confident that in five years' time, they can raise another million to be able to repay the million. Do you see what I mean? And there can obviously be cash flow problems. The beauty of convertibles is that provided, obviously, provided the company does well and the share price goes up, they don't actually have to pay any cash. They've got that huge cash flow benefit. Instead of repaying a million, they just issue more shares. You see the point? That's a huge benefit. That there's no cash flow problem. On repayment. Provided, obviously, provided the investors take shares. Because there's the one there, danger. Provided the company's done well and share price has gone up. Everybody takes shares, the company doesn't doesn't have a cash problem, you do agree with me. The one risk, of course, is if the company isn't doing well and the share price is lower, then they all want the cash. And if the company's doing badly anyway, and then they've got to find a million to repay, they could end up collapsing the company. So there's that risk in there. But hopefully, that happens. Uh, and again, they are incredibly popular. More and more companies will issue debt, issue debt. 